turn in your King James Bible to the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. I'm going to talk briefly here about the serious sin of universal basic income. I don't remember the exact number right now, but it's somewhere over 100 cities in America have UBI programs, universal basic income programs. Um, if you know the exact number, put it down in the comment section below. Of course, it'll be for this when this video comes out, but uh, it will change as time goes by because more cities will come out with universal basic income programs as time goes by, um, unless we stop it. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, um, verse 6. Let's start out there. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tr tradition which he received of us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you, neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we night might not be chargeable to any of you. And that's my suggestion. If you are in a local small area and whatever, and you meet together with other people, I am very much into a pastor, an elder, say it that way, um, having an income. The Apostle Paul, of course, he made tents. Uh, there's many times I wish I could go back to wood turning. I miss it very much. It's a lot better than being online and having everybody and their brother making fun of you and attacking you and cutting up your videos and trying to make you look stupid. Um, the reason I get an income here from this ministry, and I thank you to everybody out there that supports the ministry, the reason I get an income is because I spend all of my time. Today is Sunday, right? My wife and my son are out snowshoeing on our property here, out pruning trees and having a good time. I'm working. And I typically work, you know, six, seven days a week most times. Because, you know, I mean, how do you take a day off from doing the Lord's work? Uh, I mean, I take little bits off here and there and take a nap or we go do something fun or whatever else. But I work very hard. Uh, if I had a small local congregation and no internet ministry, well, then, yeah, I'd just say, no, don't bother giving me money. I'm just going to be a wood turner or whatever else. It'd be pretty nice, actually. <laughs> I've prayed before, you know, Lord, let me go back to that again so I can uh, not put up with all the spiritual warfare attacks and all the other things that I go through on a daily basis. But Paul's giving that as an advice thing there. He's saying we have the power to do this, but we're going to... Be an example to you to show you how to work hard. And if you, if all my viewers could come here to this property and we'd have a big, you know, revival meeting or something and you'd get to watch how I live from day to day, um, you'd see that I don't just sit around. It's a very hard life. And uh, so you should work. In other words, you should learn to work with your hands. It's very important. Um, and again, you know, the idiots out there on YouTube that attack me, oh, Dillinger doesn't know how to work. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, just formal, formerly into logging, sold firewood for a while, you know, all split by hand. I still split my firewood by hand and, you know, whatever else. And, and uh, worked as a wood turner, built boats, worked in, on a train, serving food. And during high school, you know, I've been working all my life. So whatever, people don't know what they're talking about. You can watch my thing about what does Brian Den Denlinger do for a living. If you're new to this ministry, you don't know my past, you can watch that. <clears throat> but um, verse 9, here we see it here. Um, well, let's do verse 8 again to get into context. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power. They have the right to ask money from people when you are in ministry. That's perfectly acceptable but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. Um, if I'm around a bunch of young men, I'm going to say, okay, boys, here's how you work. Let me show you how to split firewood. Let me show you how to fell trees and, and how to use a draw knife and, you know, all the different skills that I've learned over the years. Um, for even when we were with you, this we commanded you. It's a commandment. That if any would not work, neither should he eat. Universal basic income. Doesn't matter if you work, doesn't matter if you stay at home and sit around watching TV, playing video games, whatever. You'll have a universal basic income. Absolute total sin. You can't take it. You can't be part of it. And we as Christians need to stand against it and say, that's wickedness, that's sin. This universal basic income thing will pray against you wicked politicians that are trying to do this. 
You're wicked. You're evil for even thinking about bringing something like this in. For we hear, verse 11, that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. A lot of you people, you're on the internet all the time. Do you work? Do you do something for a living? Well, no, I just, you know, I binge watch your videos, brother, and then I just play video games for the rest of the day and go home, you know, go eat some junk food and then go to bed or whatever. That's being a busybody. You're working not at all. God expects you to work, to do something. It's good for you. Um, verse 12. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. In context, it doesn't mean you went down to the local 7-Eleven or Mini Mart or whatever else or supermarket. No, I bought a loaf of bread down there and I bought it with my own money that I earned. It's saying you make your own bread. And I'll tell you right now, um, if you do, you know, hand ground uh, flour and things and you make your own bread, um, it's going to be a lot healthier, number one, but also it's going to give you a great sense of accomplishment. And you do it quietly. And just blah, 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 blah. Learn to work quietly. It's important. Verse 13, But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. And if any obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. Hmm. Sounds a little bit rough, doesn't it? Not very loving. New Testament commandment. If you're not working, I don't want to have any company with you. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. All right, you ready for some admonishment out there? Um, back in the year 2020, uh, there was a thing that happened and, um, people were sent out stimulus checks and they were told you can't go to work unless you're uh, critical or necessary or whatever else they were saying back then. Um, so we're going to send you a check, a stimulus check, uh, for sitting at home, uh, completely against, uh, what the Bible teaches say a whole lot more. And you know the interesting thing? I study economics all the time. I study a lot of what's going on with money and things because I'm ignorant. So when I'm ignorant, I study and then I'm no longer ignorant. Works out pretty good. And I heard an interview with a woman named Lynette Zhang. And I would have plenty of issues with her and whatever else. But she's very intelligent when it comes to the economy and to money. She studied money for many years. And she was involved with a lot of banking and things like that, uh, stock, broking, stock brokering and all that. Um, and she said that the FedNow program, that they actually already beta tested it. And the guy was interviewing her. He said, well, when did they do that? And she said, 2020. Did you know that the stimulus checks were the very first beta test of universal basic income? How many of you took it? Did you take the stimulus check? So, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you work for it? Hmm. Well, brother, if they come out with a stimulus or the uh, universal basic income, I won't take it. You already did. What are you? Oh, I'm not going to count you as, as an enemy. I'm going to admonish you as a brother. You were deceived. You were tricked. You see, the thing you have to understand about the Goonie world and the government, the evil stuff that they do, they will always beta test it before they actually say that they released it. A lot of the technology that we have, you and I have access to, they've had it for many years in the military industrial complex. You have to learn that. All right. So they say, we're going to come out with a FedNow program. We're going to have a central bank digital currency. We want to get rid of cash and everything else. They're already testing it. And when they finally release it, people are going to say, well, yeah, we've been doing this for years. That's what's going on. So, oh, I wouldn't take anything like that, brother. I'll say no to it. I hate to tell you, uh, you already did if you took the stimulus check. I didn't. I would, I've never even received any kind of offer for it or anything else. And if I had, I would have said no, to be very frank with you. Um, I'm not for that. I don't believe in being paid for something when I didn't do any work. And this job that I have, by the way, I work harder now than I've ever worked before in my life. 
and to go through things and whatever else. I spend so many hours reading, researching, studying. Um, it's getting to the point where I'm having a hard time even answering people anymore because I'm so focused on what I need to bring out. Um, you know, the way that you have to do this when you're a Christian, when you're a preacher, you have to think about the devil and how he would do things and how he, you know, the Bible says be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So I have to think of how the devil is doing certain things and how his Jesuits and how his Freemasons and how the World Economic Forum and whatever, you know, the Vatican, name all the evil satanic organizations out there. How would they bring this stuff out? How, what are they planning? What's the next thing? How can I do something? I can't mess it up. I can't stop it if it's Bible prophecy that they're working towards. But if it's not in prophecy, then how can I slow this down or hinder this movement of Antichrist? That's what I'm supposed to do. And that is exhausting. <laughs> Believe you me, it is very tiring, very, very mentally taxing to have to go through this thing and the constant manipulation that they're trying to do with me and trying to infiltrate and trying to, to undermine this ministry and destroy this ministry and coming out and saying, don't give Denlinger a cent of your money and whatever else. And so many guys have said that. He doesn't work for a living and, and whatever. <laughs> It's insane. And you know, there's times I sleep just fine. A week later, I have the same food, the same, go to bed at the same time, everything's fine, and just boom, spiritual attacks all night long, horrible nightmares, I can't sleep. You know, I mean, that's the way I live. It's a very hard life. But you know what? I still have to exhort people to work. I still have to say, you know, you need to work hard for a living, young man. That's what you have to do. Uh, you can't just take stuff for free, right? <laughs> and, oh, I sh I'd like to become a preacher like you someday, brother. Um, you know, I have to just say it very plainly. Um, if you want to fail in life, um, a lot of you out there, try to become a preacher. Um, I just, I'm uh, sorry, I have to say it. I've talked to different people, and, I, and they've asked me, you know, should I go into full-time ministry? And I say, well, if you feel the Lord's calling you into that, that then go ahead and do it. And they completely just pff, dive bomb and crash and boom and end up coming out and attacking me and whatever else. I've seen it so many times, and they fall apart. I mean, they, get, they go out, they get drunk, they're making videos and things attacking me. Uh, you know, come out, you know, it, just all kinds of horrible stuff. This is not something that you want to do very lightly. You have to be real careful before you get into ministry, full-time ministry. And I'll tell you right now, like I said, it, the mental stuff that you have to go through to be in this kind of a ministry, uh, it's very difficult. It's extremely difficult. So I have to say that. But, you know, again, if you took the stimulus check thing, you didn't work for it. Okay, let's just be real straight here. And if you get this wicked, satanic, universal basic income system in the future... Uh, the people aren't working for it, okay? And there were pro programs set up in America in our history, things like welfare and, and unemployment that are there designed for a temporary fix for some people. A woman loses her husband or something and she's got five children to take care of and, you know, that's a hardship case and there's no church to take care of her. Then the government steps in and says, well, you know, we'll give you some welfare and whatever. Some guy loses his job. He goes, you know, has to be on unemployment. But there are people that are just milking that system and they're taking advantage of that system and it disgusts me. And if you're one of those people, um, God have mercy on you. Um, you're in sin. Okay, I'm admonishing you right now as a brother. You shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be living on government welfare or on some kind of a thing like that. A very serious type of a thing. Um, but let's go to... Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, heard a statement the one time from a, another economist I was studying, you know, watching some of his stuff, and he said, if, you always have to remember, talking about stimulus checks, he said, if something is free, you are the product. Very well said. And I just want to say another little word of caution here, by the way, before we go to read our verse here in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Very serious word of caution. Um, right now, they're going after people that took out the triple P uh, loans during the pandemic. And those people that took those loans out, some of them lied. And there was some guy, NBA uh, basketball player, and he lied about the triple P loans, about the number of employees that he had. He's in jail. They're coming after people that took out the triple P loans. 
What if they come after people that took the stimulus check? What if, if as this country is getting worse financially, they start to say, hey, you know what? We want our stimulus money back. What can you say? Do you have the money to pay it back? Hmm. Trying to admonish you. Ephesians 4.28. If they ever come out with anything like that again, um, I really hope that you say no to it the next time. No matter how bad it gets, God will provide for my needs. My God shall supply all your needs according to His, His glory and riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Messing up the verse a little bit there. Try to quote a lot of scripture from memory and sometimes it comes out a little bit weird if I'm not on that exact subject and it's not in my notes. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. New life, new walk with Christ Jesus. You got a thief, gets saved, and now he's working and giving to people. Not taking from people, he gives to people now. Pretty amazing thing. But again, well, you know, hey, why can't I just, you know, take some money and hand out from the government? It's not the way it's supposed to be for a New Testament Christian. We're supposed to work hard for a living. That's what we're supposed to do. And I'll tell you right now, um, like I've said, uh, just to be real straight with you, there's a lot of times I really wish I could just be out felling trees, you know, sawing them up and selling firewood and selling wood turnings and things like I used to do. I mean, you know, I used to go, I'd go to art shows and I'd have people coming up and telling me how great my work was. Literally had the owner of Heritage Custom Kitchens in New Holland, PA. The owner came up to me at one of my art shows and he said, you do phenomenal work. This guy, his company made the kitchen cabinets for Celine Dion, for one of her mansions. Very big kitchen cabinet company. And he was talking, I'm talking to the guy. I met people that were wealthy, uh, very extremely wealthy people. I remember I was in an art gallery the one time bringing some pieces in. The woman had said, you know, we need some more pieces and whatever. So I was bringing in some of my artwork and I'm in there and this woman, she's got this full length mink coat on, all kinds of jewelry, probably worth, you know, a lot of money. And she's in there and she says, she's looking at my wood turnings and she says, oh, she said, this is exquisite work. She said, this is beautiful. She said, does the artist live locally? And the woman there at the gallery, she smiles and she says, actually, he's standing right behind you. And she, she turns around and she's, and I, I was just, <laughs> hi. <laughs> and she said, oh, you do exquisite work. You know, you, your work is just beautiful. And I said, well, thank you very much. And I left that to come get this. Denlinger's an idiot. Denlinger's this, he's that, you know, all the stuff, you know, we'll make whole websites cutting on him, making fun of him. He's a liar. He's lying on purpose. He's a deceiver, you know, all this stuff. You know, Denlinger teaches th uh, that there's no difference between the Father and the Son. Denlinger teaches this heretical Godhead doctrine. Denlinger is this. And yeah, yeah, he's lost. He's a heretic. He's... Yeah, sure. Yeah, this is a lot better than what I used to have, you know. Uh, but why do I do this? Because I'm bought with a price. And I glorify God with my life. That's why. And because I care about you people out there. I want you to know the true doctrines of Scripture, which I show you from the Bible. Um, again, it's not my beliefs, my feelings. I show you from the Bible, and you can unsubscribe anytime you want to if you don't agree with me. It's that simple. Take it or leave it. I don't charge for any of these videos. Revelation chapter 13. <laughs> now I'll keep doing this until the Lord says do something different. Maybe someday I'll get to go back to the art world again. Of course, the way they look at social media, they'll, you know... Would you like to have my work in your gallery? Oh, it's beautiful stuff. Let me check you out on social media here. Type in my name and, ah, you know. <laughs> Sorry, sir, get out of the store. We'll call security on you. I'm actually a really nice guy in person. I'm not, you know, I, I say things caustically and sarcastically in my videos, but I'm actually a very nice guy. If you actually get to meet me, which most people don't, but anyhow, uh, getting back to this universal basic income thing, which is very horrible and very evil and you know, communism on steroids. Terrible system. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. This is what it's leading to. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. 
Here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. There you go. Uh, it's the mark of the beast. That's where this technology is going. You say, well, then it doesn't make sense, Brian. You just, you said earlier about, you know, if it's prophecy, then you can't fight against it. It's going to come in. Well, we can hinder it. Okay, the system will come in eventually, but we have to hinder it. We have to make people remember, hey, there there's nutty Christians back then that they said, you know, the thing about the, before they disappeared, this, this thing about, you know, they didn't want to use, oh, um, you know, a lot of digital type of currency and whatever. They were against the central bank digital currencies and uh, universal basic income and all this other stuff. Yeah, they wouldn't take it. I remember I was working with this guy and, and I was, we were all talking about how we spent our stimulus and this weird guy said, I didn't take any stimulus. What? I didn't work for it. <laughs> we need to leave that testimony behind, brethren. And if we don't, it's a problem. It's a big problem. And um, let me just say this in terms of a sort of a prophetic update, so to speak. Um, there's a theory there that, you know, the dollar is going to crash. Okay, you have the great taking, the book by David Rogers Webb. I've seen some interviews now with him and, and whatever. And this one, he was being interviewed and they said, um, how, how long do you see this thing till this comes in, the great taking? Are we talking five, ten years out in the future? He said, oh, no. And they said, uh, how far out? He said, a matter of months. Quite possibly a matter of months. Hmm. So let's just, let's work out this whole thing, the conspiracy right now, okay? We have, let me draw it out for you. Uh, here's my factory, okay? There's a factory, isn't that a beautiful factory? And we have commercial mortgage backed uh, securities, CMBS, all right? These are going, are losing value like crazy. Why? Because of artificial intelligence is taking jobs away from here. Again, this, within the last week or two or something like that, 24,000 jobs have been lost in the tech sector. Okay, they're leaving. Why? Well, because you have artificial intelligence coming in and they can work 24 hours a day. They're, you know, I mean, if you get like the internet based or whatever else, it's not even a robot there, or whatever. But I'm saying if you have a robot that can work or something or fold t-shirts or some kind of deal, or, well, it can work 24 hours a day. It doesn't need to take breaks. There's no lunch break. There's no, I have to go to the bathroom. Um, just a little bit of routine maintenance occasionally, I guess, probably some oil and different things or whatever to keep it functioning correctly. They're going to thrift them so that they'll become fairly, fairly cheap. And so they're already saying we can cut 24,000 jobs from Google and a lot of the other Silicon Valley type of tech companies because of artificial intelligence. We don't need employees to do this stuff anymore. So the Biden administration came out and you have all these big commercial buildings that are now running at very low capacity because the employees are leaving because of artificial intelligence. And now they're coming out and they're giving federal funding to say these commercial mortgage-backed security buildings, big commercial buildings, um, I heard actually that there was one that sold for $16 a square foot. <laughs> Do the math on that, okay? Pennies on the dollar, in other words. But they come out and they're saying, we're going to turn this into housing for low-income people. Huh. So you have the great taking where they take everybody who's, who's in debt, they take the collateral, you know, the unsecured collateral, essentially. The bank says, hey, your house here is a mortgage-backed security, MBS. Um, do you have the money to pay for it? No, you don't. Where do you go? Go in here to the low-income housing that's now been emptied out because they lost all the jobs due to artificial intelligence. Low-income housing, that could be a, what, a, maybe a debtor prison? Hmm. Well, um, we can't do a whole lot of work here, and you know, we're trying our very best. Well, then maybe uh, we'll have uh, 
We'll say that this is no longer commercial. We'll now make it housing with uh, UBI. You see how it's shaping up? Um, well, I don't know, Brother Brian. I'm just sitting here eating my Doritos and drinking my you know, Pepsi or whatever other poison pop or something or Gatorade or whatever. I, I don't know, brother. It's, some of this stuff's a little conspiratorial, a little kooky. I don't think that this is going to happen. And I'll just kind of, you know, uh, like the little monkey going this way, this way, and this way or whatever. Uh, I'll just pretend it doesn't exist. I'll just say, ah, it's not going to happen and whatever as it's being formed. They've already tried it out. Already tried out the UBI with the stimulus checks. A lot of you fell for it. A lot of you are in debt. Tried to warn over the years. Lived this very frugal life. You know, right now, I mean, you can see my one wall back that way. Right there. There's one wall. There's the other wall. Nine feet wide. Tiny home. Oh, but you're, you know, have to have your big expensive mortgaged house and whatever else. And, you know, with all the debt. Well, if you end up there, don't know what to tell you. Uh, times could get pretty rough for people here in America. You've been living by the word of God all these, all these years and whatever else. Well, some of you might have to pay for a little bit. Uh, I suggest you try to get out of debt as quickly as you can. Maybe take some radical steps to get out of debt. But um, <laughs> uh, don't really have too much good news for you. Sorry about that. Uh, really depressing and everything else. Yeah, you know, well, that's the future. Yeah. But uh, if you do things the right way, if you actually are one of the ones out there that listened to me and got out of debt and you now have some land and you have some food stored up and whatever else and things. Um, good job. Thank you for listening. Okay. Thank you very much for taking me seriously. Not just he's an entertainer on YouTube. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm a Bible believing preacher that has been trying to warn the body of Christ for a long time about this. And you will never hear this type of stuff in church buildings. Never unless it's a very rare church building, but 99%, you won't hear it for one second. The pastor, um, some of them, some of the pastors and things are out there. They get involved in, you know, helping people and whatever else. And okay, fine, I get it. I'm not really much for going and visiting people in the hospital and whatever else. I'm too busy. I can't, I don't have time for that. My calling is a teacher of the word of God. But uh, a lot of these preachers, they just, they don't have the time to study this stuff. And so they're not warning people. And that's what I'm here for. That's why I'm saying to you out there, I don't care what you think of me and whatever else, but you better start waking up to the subject of universal basic income. Because if you remember again, the trucker protest thing up in Canada, what did they do? They shut off people's PayPal. Um, there are people having their bank accounts closed. If you've had any of this stuff happen, let me know in the comments below. Uh, what was the thing? Um, we tried to set it up for donations originally on my website. I think it was Square or something like that. And I mean, within days, boom, taken down. <laughs> so um, they can shut me off just like this. Uh, PayPal. I had a lot of trouble with PayPal for a while, and they finally just, you know, let it alone. And I can't use PayPal to buy certain things because I have restrictions on my account or whatever because I didn't provide, you know, every single thing that they asked for. Um, they just kept on asking for more and more and more, you know, proof that I'm an, an actual business, registered as a business, sole proprietor in the state of Maine, excuse me, showed the proof. All the different tax numbers and all the other things that I have to show that, yes, King James Video Ministries is legitimate. It's real. Um, it's not just some kind of little funny thing that I do or whatever. I gave out all that stuff. No, oh, you have to go and you have to get this yet. You have to go and you get this. And they just playing this game. Finally, I just said, okay, you know what? I can't. I'm sorry. Gone far enough. And that's been a few years ago. And they've just kind of let the account go. But they could shut me down like that. Um, that's the danger of digital money. 
And so if we allow this UBI thing to come in and central bank digital currencies uh, and we accept more stimulus checks, or you accept more because I was never part of it, um, it's going to be a bad situation. So pay down your debts as quickly as you can. Very important. Um, but with that being said, make sure that you are giving to ministries as well. Like I've said, you don't have to give to this ministry, but do something. It doesn't have to be 10% of your income, but do something for the Lord. Put some kind of money out there to show the Lord, I'm going to be, you can trust me with money. I'm going to be good enough that you give me the money, I'll give it back to you in some way. Do something. You buy a bunch of tracks and go hand them out or something like that. Do something with your money for the Lord. If it's all just about stocking up and whatever else and you don't want to give out any of it, well, the Lord's going to have a problem with that. And if you take money when you didn't work, that's going to be a really bad thing. If any would not work, neither should he. You have to work for your money. Um, so I could ramble on for quite a while about this, but we'll let it go for now. So... Um, Please understand that I love you and, and my sarcastic rebukes and whatever else and, and the, the harsh, cruel things that I say to people make people fidget in their seat and, oh, 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 you know, it's because I love you. I'm admonishing you. Admonishing is not a positive, happy thing. Admonishing is a little bit of hitting you. Okay, that's what I have to do. A good preacher will do that. Um, I've heard some really good, great preaching down through the years. Um, not myself, but older preachers. And their preaching was rough. They put you in your place, make you feel about that big sometimes. That's the way it should be. We need that. We need to put down the flesh. So that is going to be it, and we'll see you in future studies. Thank you for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5 verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.